Hello again. Welcome to number six, I think, in a, a series of folk shows from Folk Beeston. I'm Colin. Hi. And I'm Andy. Hello. Uh, hi, Andy. Um, right, well, what we've got tonight, we're, we're kicking off with uh, John Chambers, who's uh, got a, a song about a, an historical character. He's going to tell us about that in a, in a few minutes. And then we've got uh, Elaine Chipchase uh, with a rather mysterious song about a maid. Hmm. I, knowing Elaine, I suspect it's got some double entendres in it. it um, well. But I haven't heard it yet, so I won't, I won't uh, prejudge it. But she's followed by Hugh, Hugh Miller, who's doing a, a lovely unaccompanied song. And then John Ledbury, who's doing a song which is appropriate for the 1st of May. And, yeah, it um, is. It's related to dancing as well. John McCormack follows with a, a jaunty Irish number that I think you'll uh, probably know. Yeah, we can all join in with that. And uh, then we've got uh, Mick Pierce, who is uh, leading the folk club choir i think yeah he's got he managed somehow to get some of us uh, some of his mates from the club to to sing along with him but it's a it's i believe it's an american fiddle tune that a fiddler wrote some words to so work that one out and then at the end we've got our guest this week who's steve turner who uh, i'm sure many of you have come across one way or another and uh, he's doing a, a song we can all join in with which is a great way to to end the show and playing his concertina, which we're all looking Oh, yeah, that's to. right. First concertina we've had, which is great. Nice to see some new instruments. Um, now, we've had, we've had some requests, um, but nonetheless, here we are again. And um, one of them was for a raffle. We did mention a raffle, Andy, and we've not got around to one, but we've got some news of a raffle next week. We're going to save that to the end. Okay, great. Yeah, and now we're going to welcome our co-host and co-organiser of Second Time Around, John Chambers, into the Virtual Folk Club room. Hello then, and uh, as you can see, we've got John with us now, John Chambers, welcome. Hello Colin, hello Andy, nice Hi, to see John. you again. Okay, uh, John, tell us about the song you're going to be doing today. Well, it's a song by Sidney Carter uh, about a gentleman called John Ball, and I first heard it, I think, sung by Dave Cooper at the Robin Hood Folk Club many years ago and liked the song then. But subsequently, a, a year or two later, we booked Grace Notes at the Folk Club, a very fine lady trio. Maggie Boyle, sadly the late Maggie Boyle now, Helen Hockenhall, previously married to Roger Watson, a very fine singer-songwriter, and Linda Hardcastle. And they did it, and I thought it was a fantastic song again, so I introduced it into my repertoire. And I've done it quite a few times since, and I always enjoy it. It's such a joyful, uplifting song, I always think, and good joining in song. Yeah, it is. It's a good choice. It's in the key of E, by the way, everybody, if you want to get ready to, to strum along. But John, tell us a little bit about, because the song is about John Ball, who was a real person. Tell yeah. us a bit about him. He was a wonderful man of the cloth in the 14th century, who believed we were all born equal in the eyes of God. Hence the reference to Adam and Eve in the opening verse, I think. Uh, and the hierarchy, of course, they tolerated him, but the hierarchy thought that the hoi polloi were people who had to graduate to a higher level, I think, in society. Mm -hmm. But he carried on with his beliefs. He supported the Peasants' Revolt, which went even further against the hierarchy. And after so many years of tolerance, they eventually, I think, tried uh, and hung and hung drew and quartered him, which was a terrible end to come to. Mm. And this was a tribute song written by um, Sidney Carter in the 1980s, I think to commemorate either an anniversary of the Peasants' Revolt or perhaps John Ball dying. But mm. uh, It's a wonderful song, I think, joyous song, very uplifting song. John Chambers' a version of John Ball. Hello everyone, it's lovely to be back with you again. And I'm going to sing a song by Sidney Carter called Sing John Ball, which I've done several times at the club. And recently Beatrice did a wonderful rendition of it. I find it a very joyful, uplifting song, and it's by a very decent man of the cloth from the 14th century, John Ball. Do read up about him if you can on Wikipedia. Well worth knowing more about a great man celebrated in this song. And it's called Sing John Ball, in the key of E, if anyone wants to play along. Who 
will be the lady who will be the lord when we are ruled by the love of one another who will be the lady who will be the lord in the light that is coming in the morning sing john ball and tell it to the more Long live the day that is dawning, oh, I crow like a cock, I'll carol like a lark, in the light that is coming in the morning, the light that is coming in the morning. Eve is the lady, Adam is the Lord, when we are ruled by the love of one another. Eve is the lady, Adam is the Lord, in the light that is coming in the morning. Sing John Ball and tell it to the Lord. Long live the day that is dawning. Oh, I'll crow like a cock, I'll carol like a lark in the light that is coming in the morning. The light that is coming in the morning. Now labour and spin in fellowship I say, labour and spin in the love of one another, labour and spin in fellowship I say, in the light that is coming in the morning, sing John Ball and tell it to the morn. Long live the day that is dawning, oh I'll crow like a cock, I'll carol like a lark, in the light that is coming in the morning, in the light that is coming in the morning. All shall be ruled in fellowship I say, all shall be ruled in the love of one another, all shall be ruled in fellowship I say, in the light that is coming in the morning. Sing John Ball and tell it to the all. Long live the day that is dawning. Oh, I'll crow like a cock. I'll carol like a lark in the light that is coming in the morning. Sing John Ball and tell it to the all. Long live the day that is dawning. Oh, I'll crow like a cock. I'll carol like a lark in the light that is coming in the morning. The light that is coming in the morning. I hope you enjoyed singing along with that and perhaps playing along with it. I hope it's going to be a great show. I'm sure it will be another great show. So enjoy it and lovely being with you and hope to see you again before too long. Bye for now. Hello everybody it's, and it's great to welcome Elaine Chip Chase back again and uh, Elaine this, we noticed last week that you also have a second name on your Facebook page. Can you just explain how that's come about? Yes, well, when you log on to the show, you'll see that there's somebody called Elaine Thompson. But that's really me. Um, years ago, I was an artist and that was my name then. And I joined Facebook at that point. And now I've finished being an artist and my name really is Elaine Chipchase but I don't know how to change it on Facebook. Okay great yes we all struggle with Facebook and I know I'm trying to remove some stuff that I put on once you've got it on it seems almost impossible to get it off and the world seems to know every change that you make to your page but there you go uh, one of the challenges. Now the song you're going to do today is the Maid's Conjuring book, a tantalising title. So can you mm -hmm. explain a little bit about, about that? Well, we talked last week, oh not last week, last time about Pills to Purge Melancholy, Thomas Durfey's series of songs that were meant to cheer you up. So they were all a little rude. And uh, so this is one of them. And I'm not telling you what the Maid's Conjuring book is. You will have to guess that for yourself. That's, that's good. And just explain again, this book, is that available generally online? Yes, it's available. It's several books, actually. He compiled these songs from about 1690 to about 1720. And some of them he wrote. He probably wrote the Maid's Conjuring book, but others he sort of collected that were songs that were going around at the time. So he was the sort of Cecil Sharp of his day then, really. <laughs> yes, except he differed greatly from Cecil Sharp because a lot of the songs in Pills to Purge Mel Melancholy, which are quite rude, oh. are ones that Cecil Sharp took and then sanitised so, so that oh. they weren't so rude. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. 
Anyway, thank you very much, Elaine, and we look forward to the Maid's Conjuring book and seeing if we can decipher the hidden mysteries. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye. bye <laughs> this is the Maid's Conjuring book from Thomas de Fay's Pills to Purge Melancholy from 1719. Hi there, it's um, yep, Steve Benford here, and it's my great pleasure to be speaking to Hugh Miller, who's going to uh, sing us a song. And um, Hugh, I just wonder if you'd like to, to tell us a bit about the song you're going to sing for us. Yeah, hello Steve. It's, um, it's from a poem by Charles Causley called Mother Get Up, Unbar the Door. And Causley's poems seem to sort of fit well with turning into songs. Quite a lot of people have turned various of his poems into songs, but not this one, I don't think. Me and my friends came across Causley's poems in the 60s and thought, Ooh, you know, we could do something with that. And a friend of mine wrote a tune for this poem and we never did anything with it. And it sort of sat in the back of my mind for 50 years. And then last year I thought, yeah, I could try something with that. And I ended up really liking it. So this is a resurrection of, of, of that. And I, I think it's a really interesting uh, song because it's, it's actually a classic night visiting song where you know, a dead lover comes back to visit their living lover uh, overnight. But Causley has turned it into a, a modern song, or at least a post-World War II song, and then given it a different twist at the end. Um, so, you know, it's a sort of traditional song, but uh, something that's a bit different. And then the other, the other thing which is worth saying about it is that the, the narrator in this song is the 18-year-old daughter of the lover that's being visited. So when I sing it, you're going to need a massive suspension of disbelief <laughs> to, make, to make sense of it. The, the last couple of verses don't make sense unless you, you realise that. So yeah. that's the way the song goes. I, I, think I, I think I can hold on to that. I can hold on to that picture. That's, that's no problem. And I also wanted to ask you, because I've, I've been hearing you sort of sing in, in several sort of sessions and clubs over Zoom and things. and. Um, yeah, what's it, what's it like to kind of sing as an unaccompanied singer kind of over the internet? How does that feel for you? Well, I mean, for a change, I think I've got an advantage. I mean, I always think these people with instruments, you know, 
they, there's more going on there than with the unaccompanied singers. But at least some of the, the platforms work so badly with instruments that the, the straight voice, which of course is what they're built for, comes through quite well in unaccompanied uh, singing. I, I've noticed over the last couple of weeks as we've done more and more one way or another, people seem to have been getting around the problems of the interface. And the session we had on Wednesday with the Carrington Club, the sound was really quite good, and you could, you know, you could enjoy listening to people for a while. But the, I, I think, still got a bit of an edge as an unaccompanied singer, uh, online at least. Yeah, yeah. Well, it certainly has been sounding great when you've been singing, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to hearing the song. So yeah, I guess it's a, uh, it's over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mother, get up and bar the door, throw wide the window pane. I see a man stand all covered in sand outside in Vicarage Lane. His body is shot with seventy stars, his face is cold as cane. His coat is a crust of desert dust, and he comes from Alamein. He has not felt the flaking frost, he has not felt the rain, and not one blow of the burning snow since the day that he was slain. O oh, mother, in your husband's arms for too long you have lain. Get up, my dear, your true love's here upon this peaceful plain. But mother, on your battered brow fifty long years of lain, and the soldier they slew at twenty-two, never a one does gain. So I'll undo the fine front door, I'll snap the silver chain, and mild as milk in my skin of silk, I'll ease him of his pain. My breast has been for years eighteen as white as Charles's wain. But now I'm had by a soldier lad, whistling Lily Marlene. Goodbye to Jack, goodbye to Jim, farewell Sarah Jane. Goodbye to the good green sisterhood, knitting at pearl and plain. Go wash the water from your eye, the bullet from your brain. I'm drowned as a dove in the tunnel of love, and I'll never come home again. And hello again, and as you see I've got uh, John Ledbury this time with me, and uh, John, nice to see you again. And um, Nice to be here. Yeah, wherever you are. Um, but my recollection is of you becoming a, a bit of a regular down at second time around maybe three three years ago or so but it was quite evident from then that uh, you'd been around the folk scene for a while do you want to you want to give us a potted history of your folk uh, folk singing and other activities i think that the potted history i started off originally from birmingham started off singing around the birmingham folk clubs and in uh, 1969, I moved to Sheffield and was singing around the Sheffield folk scene for about 25 years. Uh, after that, I moved down here and was sort of off the scene for a bit while I was looking after my wife, who wasn't very well. And it's only after she's passed away that I really sort of come back into the folk clubs. Mm -hmm. I did manage, while I was there, to keep going with my dancing. I'm involved with uh, two dance teams. One down here, Stone Monkey, who are now currently based in uh, Breeston. And the other is Lord Conyers Morris, who are based in the Rotherham area of Sheffield. And uh, I kept going with them and uh, oh. I gradually got back into the singing. Excellent. Well, we, we, you do some great songs. This one, I think, links to your uh, to the dance you just mentioned, isn't it? It's Hal and Toe. It does. Uh, with uh, Lord Conyers Morris, when there isn't a, a lockdown going on, we dance out at uh, sunrise on May morning, it happens out at half past five this time of year, at the site of Robin Hood's trysting tree, which is one of his uh, oak trees, it's supposed to be the one where he had his trysts with Marion, 
Mm-hmm. And we, we danced there on May morning, and I always sing, after we finish the dance, sing uh, Hallan Toe, which actually comes from Cornwall, yeah. although the version I sing contains two, the first two verses have never been sung in Cornwall, as far as I know. The first one is actually from Shakespeare's As You Like It, right. and uh, it, it uh, came after uh, some foresters were confronted by Jake was who insisted that the man that killed the deer should be presented to the duke, dressed in the deer's skin and horns. And that one seems quite appropriate for us to do on May morning, because on May Eve, we do a version of the Abbot's Bromley horn dance, Mm -hmm. which involves uh, parading about with uh, deer antlers. And so uh, talking about wearing the horn was quite appropriate to that. And the the second verse of this one was actually uh, added by Mike Waterson. I'm not quite sure where he got it from, but uh, the Watersons, as you know, can do no wrong in Yorkshire, so I have to include mm-hmm. that one. Or anywhere yeah, else. The three verses, actually, from Helston. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, that's great. Um, so that's, uh, like John was saying last week, uh, it's definitely a bit of uh, infotainment as well. The uh, the song then is Halanto, very appropriate for the date. And uh, a little link to up back to last week with uh, Shakespeare in your version. So let's hear John Ledbury singing Halanto. There are 12 months in all of the year, as I have heard many men say, but the merriest month in all of the year, it is the month of May. Take no scorn to wear the horn, it were the crest ere you were born. Your father's father wore it, and your father wore it too. Howl and to, jolly rumble o, we were up long before the day o to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the May o. The summer is a coming in, and winter's gone away, oh. Since man was first created, his works have been debated, and he has celebrated the coming of the spring. Howl and to, jolly rumble, oh, we were up. Long before the day, oh, to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the May, oh. The summer is a coming in, and winter's gone away, oh. Robin Hood and Little John are both gone to the fair, oh. And we are to the merry green wood to hunt the buck and hare, o oh, Hal and to jolly rumble, o oh, we were up long before the day, o oh, to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the May, o oh. the summer is a coming in, and winter's gone away, o. Oh. What happened to the Spaniards has made so great a boast, oh. Oh, they can eat the feathered goose, and we shall eat the roast, oh, Hal and to, jolly rumble, oh, we were up. Long before the day, oh, to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the May, oh. The summer is a coming in, and winter's gone away, oh. God bless Aunt Mary Moses, in all her power and might, oh. And send us peace to England, grant peace by day and night, O oh, Alanto, oh, jolly rumble, O oh, we were up long before the day, O oh, to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the May, O. Oh, 
For summer is a coming in, and winter's gone away. Oh. Hello again, and it's great to welcome John McCormack. Um, mm. Good who, morning, Andy. Uh, like most of us, suffering away in isolation. What have you? What have you been doing, John? Well, as I say, in the mornings, I normally read the newspapers and I do their Sudoku's and crosswords and code words because I've treated myself to three newspapers. I have a Daily Mail, the I, uh, and the Evening Post. Mainly, mainly I and the Evening Post are for the crosswords and the Sudoku's and things. And I think you can go, f you go fishing, do you? From and, uh, yes, um, in the afternoon, if it's nice, because I'm very lucky, my house backs onto the Beeston Canal. So I've got my own private fishing patch. I can just go out the back door and onto, um, I'm at the canal side. And have you caught anything? Uh, not lately, no. And I won't be catching anything for a while because I've run out of maggots. Oh, and yeah. of course, all the fishing tackle shops, I think, are closed. Yeah, well, you can always uh, get, get a half-eaten chicken, stick it in a tin, you'll soon have some maggots. But I think yeah. you your neighbour caught uh, a monster the other day. Yeah, my neighbour, next door one but neighbour, he moved into the house a few years ago because it's on the, can on the canal bank and he can go, f he's an avid fisherman, he's fishing all the time. And he, in fact, that's where I got my maggots from because he ordered some through Amazon, got them delivered from Amazon, live maggots through the post. <laughs> Oh, and, and he caught a, a, a pike. It must have been oh, about a, I don't know, a foot long. It was quite. It looked quite big to me, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Exciting times. Anyway, tell us about the song you're going to be singing. Well, I'm going to be singing. Its official title is "The Whistling Gypsy Rover," but everybody knows it as "The Gypsy Rover." And I say I always thought it was a traditional song, but it it wasn't. It was written by an Irish singer-songwriter called Leo Maguire in the 1950s and he's got copyright to it apparently but uh, it's been recorded by lots of groups like uh, the Corries, the Clancy Brothers, uh, the Seekers and uh, Foster and Allen and probably a lot more but uh, the one I remember was uh, by a group called the Highwaymen back in mid 60s and they had a top 40 hit with it. I'd never heard of the Highwaymen before and I can't say I've ever heard of them since but uh, I say they got into the top 40 and I just I just like it and it's one of the few songs that I can uh, sing and play without a music stand. Ooh, Tremendous anyway well it's a good cheery song so we're looking forward to it. it is. Anyway thanks very much John and uh, we'll listen to the Whistling Gypsy Rover. Okay bye. Thank you Andy bye. The Whistling Gypsy Rover. The Gypsy Rover came over down through the valley so shady He whistled and sang till the green wood rang And he won the heart of a lady Ha-dee-do, ha-dee-do, da-dee do ha dee do He whistled and sang till the green wood rang And he won the heart of a lady She left He is no 
again and this time as you can see we've got uh, Mick Pierce with us and uh, I just need to say for all you folks out there enjoying this mix uh, an important behind the scenes uh, technologist because he's stitching all these videos together so you get a a, a slightly smoother and uh, nicer experience these days so thanks very much for that Mick and you also provided the introductory music so uh, tell us a little bit more about that well most of these tunes are uh, tunes by your carolan the irish harp player mm -hmm. um one of them isn't one's is neil gow's lament for the death of his second wife a famous scottish tune by a fiddler who was called neil gow mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of them are um they'd be well known to uh, to harpists particularly and to people who are into irish music well, oh, that's very nice, I have to say. And, and if people didn't tune in till exactly 8.15, uh, you won't have heard any of that. But uh, when we play out at the end, uh, one of those tunes will be uh, on the soundtrack. So they'll be able to hear that. Um, the song this week, Mick. Something new, it again. <laughs> it is. It's not one I do so often, actually. It's, uh, it's called Midnight on the Water, which is the title of an American fiddle waltz. It was written back in the 1930s by a, a Texas fiddler and popularized by his son. And these days it's very popular with American uh, fiddle players. And it was used by an Irishman called Ron Cavanna uh, to create this song. He put the words to it. So it's a lovely little waltz. And uh, I've also got some people to help me out with the choruses. Yeah, we won't we won't spoil the illusion by uh, by saying uh, how it was how it was done. If people want to know how you achieved this uh, effect, then uh, please write to us, and uh, we might we might let you in on the secret. But we're going to hear "Midnight on the Water," and it's uh, Mick Pierce and friends. Well, I never cared. This fancy dancing from my two left feet followed my roving eye. But when the band starts to play that old slow tune in three four time, I'll dance with my darling till morning comes nigh. Play me a fiddle tune. Sing me a song, banish misfortune, me time is not long. Midnight on the water, so steady and slow, the lark in the morning, once more for the road. Midnight on the water, so steady and slow Let's have another drink Set up, up Joe Well, most of my dancing Has been done in bar rooms This drinking and dancing They go hand in so buy a beer for the fiddler Request that old slow tune And I'll dance all night with The one that I love Play me a fiddle tune Sing me a song And it's the sort of tune Let's have a drink, set a 
Hello, and it's welcome to Steve Turner, who's guesting for us this week. Steve, um, tell us, how did you get into folk music? An awful long time ago. Uh, how did I get into folk music? I, um, I heard a Bob Dylan album. Somebody lent me a Bob Dylan's first album when I was at school. And uh, so I thought, oh, this is, uh, this is good. But uh, so I got myself a tennis racket and stood in front of the mirror. <laughs> Ah. And, uh, and then I had a hat and the harmonica harness, and I thought, uh, well, it's okay playing the tennis racket, but you better get yourself a guitar. So I uh, saved up seven pounds, and because I come from Manchester originally, got uh, went and bought myself a, a guitar in, uh, in Barrett's in Manchester, and off we went. And so uh, for the next few years, I was Bob Dylan, and uh, met John, John Cooper Clark used to go to a folk club in, uh, mm -hmm. in Manchester, a famous poet who you've probably heard of. And he used to ask me to sing Bob Dylan songs when he was a lad. And uh, then it went from there and heard Nick Jones was a big, huge influence yeah. of mine early on. I, I ran a folk club in uh, Manchester and one, one day, it wasn't my idea actually, uh, the resident group turn didn't turn up. This is 1969, I remember that. And the resident group didn't turn up one night. So the, uh, the landlord came upstairs and said, where's the resident group? And I said, well, I don't know. He said, the folk club's got to run there. Who's going to run it? I said, well, I don't know. I said, you'll do. So uh, it went from there and I ran the folk club. And one night I had Dave Berlin booked and he, um, he didn't turn up. And Mike Harding was down in the bar, went down to the bar and Mike Harding said, no, oh, Dave's, uh, Dave can't come tonight because he's not very well, but I brought this young lad along and it's Nick Jones. And Nick uh, was just turned professional and uh, played things like Anne and Water. And yeah, was, you know, fair. blew me, blew me from here to Kingdom Come and uh, turned me from doing a lot of sort of blues and uh, contemporary sort of songs to, to traditional songs. And that's how it went. And uh, then I was in a band um, a Geordie band and one of the lads played concertina and uh, I discovered that there was a concertina in my my house and um, I t took it from there I decided I wanted to learn the concertina and uh, I couldn't afford a concertina but one of the, a, a lady on the Manchester folk scene lent me a concertina because she felt sorry for me but it didn't have any thumb straps which you have to have to uh, play the concertina and me being the world's least practical person I learned the concertina with my head, my chin <laughs> on the one side and my knee on the other side of the concertina. I mean, any other, any other normal person would have uh, made himself some thumb straps out of a bit of string, you know, but not Mr. Turner. And uh, so went from there and uh, turned mm -hmm. professional in 1980, was a professional singer for 11 years, uh, toured all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, America, all over Europe. I uh, made four albums then and made an, then I had 13 years off the folk scene, getting the violin business together, which I've got a violin shop about 100 yards down the road from where the folk club is, as you possibly know. Yeah. And I uh, had 13 years off getting that organised and then came back on the folk scene in about 20, oh, 2005, 26, and um, made four more albums since then. and. Uh, back on tour, much to some people's chagrin, and uh, <laughs> here, I, here I am now. 
Sounds like some, uh, you and I have some uh, similar influences in Dylan and Nick Jones, as many people have, I'm sure. Steve, tell us about the song that, that we're about to hear. Yeah, this is uh, Drive Don't Care Away, which is, uh, again, a song that I learned about 10 years ago and forgot all about. I learned it from a guy called Tony O'Neill, who used to run the Maidenhead Folk Club, and he sang it one night and gave me the song. And I sang it a few times, and one of the times I sang it, apparently it went on to YouTube. And I was, uh, I did a, a t little tour of America for the first time last September, which included uh, a festival in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And a few weeks after the festival, a lady emailed me who'd seen me there, and she'd also seen this YouTube clip of me singing Drive Dull Care Away, and said, oh, that's nice, you should sing it again. So I listened to it again, and I thought, yeah, that's okay, and uh, relearnt it, but I discovered that um, I'd not done any research into it when I first learnt it. But I discovered that it comes from Prince Edward Island, and it was actually, originally was uh, an English broadside, and put to music by a guy called Joe Hickerson, um, Canadian guy, and he put it to a tune that's very similar to a song called Rolling Down to Old Maui, the English version of that. And, uh, but the tune that Tony sang, that I didn't realize at the time, was completely different. And I assume that Tony must have written that tune. And if you look on the, on the internet, there's a few versions of people singing the tune Joe Hickerson used to sing, but uh, there's me singing it as well to, to the tune that I learned from Tony, which is the only different tune. So, but uh, I thought it was just a nice little song for this sort of time that we're in at the moment. And uh, that's the reason that I resurrected it for the, uh, and it's the first time I've sung it for about 10 years um, for, for what we're going to hear now. Right, well, thanks for that. And yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Okay, thanks very much then, Steve. That's brilliant. My pleasure. I did a little tour of America last uh, September and uh, after my booking at the Portsmouth Maritime Folk Festival a lady emailed me and said that she'd uh, listened to me singing this song on YouTube which I did about 10 years ago and I've completely forgotten all about it so I had to relearn it so this is the second time around version of Drive Dull Care Away from the singing of Joe Hickerson. <laughs> Why should we of a lot complain or grieve at our distress? Some think if riches they could gain could be true happiness. Alas, in vain is all their strife. Life cares will not last. But since we're here with friends so dear, we'll drive dull care away. Away, 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 away. We'll drive dull care away. But since we're here with friends so dear, we'll drive dull care away. Why should the rich despise the poor? Why should the poor repine? Or in a few short years from now, in equal friendship find They're all the same, we're all to blame, they're all made of one clay. But since we're here with friends so oh dear, we'll dry a dull care away. Away, 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 we'll dry a dull care away. But since we're here with friends so oh dear, we'll drive the care away. The only circumstance in life that ever I would find to conquer care and temper strife was a contented mind. With this in store, there's so much more than all things else can bear. Since we're here with friends so oh dear, we'll drive dull care away. Away, 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 we'll drive dull care away. But since we're here with friends so oh dear, we'll drive dull care away. So always make the best of life. 
Lord render it a curse. But take it as you would a wife, for better or for worse. Life at its best is but a jest, like a dreary winter's day. But since we're here with friends so dear, we'll try a dull care away. Away, 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 we'll try a dull care away. But since we're here with friends so dear, we'll try a dull care away. Away, 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 we'll try a dull care away. But since we're here with friends so dear, we'll try a dull care away. Well, that's it. I can't believe it's over already. Thanks ever so much, Steve Turner, for being our guest and, of course, for all of our artists this week who are all going to get a credit in a minute in the, uh, the closing credits, so hang around for that. But, Andy, we mentioned the raffle earlier. We keep mentioning this raffle. We've really got to do it. How are we going to do it for next week? Okay. Uh, it's very simple, really. You just need to log on to the uh, Club Show page, and there you'll find uh, the events post, which tells you when the next show is. And if you say you're going to the show before 11 o'clock on Wednesday, then your name will be entered for the raffle. Right. So on, on the, the show next week, we will draw names out of a hat. I do actually have a hat. Um, and at that point, we'll have to start thinking about what the prizes are going to be. But um, we'll see. It's all a bit of fun anyway, isn't it? But uh, yeah. hopefully uh, you'll enjoy that. So go to the event page before 11 next Wednesday and uh, say that you're coming. So you're coming to the show next week and you'll be in the raffle. And that's about it. Do hang around for the closing credits, which uh, gives you an opportunity to hear some more of Mick Pierce's lovely guitar playing. And there's plenty of information there about our Facebook rolling show page. And of course, the all important website address, which will stay on the screen until Mick stops playing. So plenty of opportunity to note all that down. Cheerio. Okay, bye. <laughs>
Thank you.